Okay, today we cross the Rubicon and we go from the Pesuke de Zimra into the Birchos Kriyashma, from the verses of praise to the blessings that introduce the Shema. And as such, we cross from the world of Yetzirah to the world of Berea. As we discussed in the past, the world of Yetzirah is the world of the human experience or the, uh, the world of a human emotion, how we characterize our experience and how we interpret our experience and how we have insight into what we, how we can have insight into the divine reality, into the presence of Hashem through the interpretation and through the insight into our own experience. So that's the world of Yetzira. And in the world of Berea, we enter into a different framing along, following along a progression from there, beginning to connect to the beyond itself, beginning to conceptualize what is outside of our experience and how that affects us. So rather than reaching from the inside out, we're reaching from the outside in. So the world of Berea is characterized as the wor world of machshava, the world, the world of thought. So emotions are reactive and thought is intentional, right? With, with emotions, we're always uh, having some sensation that is, uh, that is subject to, it's as a, as a reaction to something which occurs around us. Thought, on the other hand, is conceptual, abstract, and starts from the idea itself. It's objective. Thought is objective, at least in, in distinction from emotion, which is entirely subjective, right? Emotion is about what it feels like to be me in the presence of this idea. And thought asks, what is this idea? And so uh, we're getting closer to truth. Having woken up our body in the world of Asiya at the morning brachas and having uh, gotten our emotions in touch, gotten in touch with our emotions and gotten in touch with our experience, not as, now of course we're talking about Yitzira of Kedusha, Yitzira of holiness, which means that when we're getting in touch with our emotions, we're not getting in touch with them as an end for themselves. We're getting in touch with them as a way to be aware of what is the truth in our emotions. And then the next step is to begin to think about the truth itself. And you notice how I said we begin to think about the truth itself, right? So that's the world of thought. The beginning of the bracha on page 84, remember this is Birchos Kriya Shema, the blessings that introduce the reading of the Shema. And it starts with a blessing. Just for structural analysis, we look at page 84 and 85, the beginning of the bracha, Baruch Atah Hashem Elokeinu Melech HaOlam, Yotzer or Uvore Hoshech, Ose Shalom, Uvore Sakol, Hamer Laaret, etc. Blessed are you. Or should we translate this in the Kabbalistic vein? We bring down to reality you, the eternal and infinite source of our lives 
who is directing the occurrences of all of the worlds. The context in which I find myself. Who forms light and creates darkness, makes peace and creates all, who illuminates the earth and those who dwell upon it, etc. So that's the beginning of the bracha. The bracha continues all the way through page 88 and 89 with the middle paragraph on the page. The last line, Baruch HaTo Hashem, Yotzer HaMeoros. Blessed are you, God, who forms the luminaries. Note the word Yotzer and meoros, lights, right? So the end of the bracha is a paraphrasing of the beginning of the bracha. Remember the beginning of the bracha was, blessed are you Hashem, our God, King of the universe, who forms light. And the bracha ends, blessed are you God, who forms the luminaries. And the same word Yotzer appears. Okay, so that's the first bracha. The second bracha starts right there on page 88 and 89, Ahava Rabba, or in other versions, Ahavas Olam, Ahav Tanu Hashem Elokeinu, with abundant love, with eternal love, you have loved us. God, the source of our life, and the bracha concludes on page 90 and 91, Baruch Atah Hashem HaBocher Biyamo Yisrael Bi Ahava, with love. So again, the bracha begins with etern the eternal love of Hashem, and the, bracha the entire bracha continues to expand on that theme, and the closing line of the bracha is a paraphrasing of the whole bracha, uh, especially the introductory line. Okay, so far so good? Then we have the three paragraphs of the Shema. Shema with Baruch Shem in, uh, inserted, and then via Havta, paragraph number one, paragraph number two, Vahayayim Shamoa, paragraph number three, Vayomer, Ani Hashem Elokeichem, Emes, Viatziv, Venachon is the beginning of the first, is the beginning of the next Baracha. And that Baracha continues, it's only one Baracha. Um, Which um, which concludes um, with Baruch Ata Hashem Go Al Yisrael. Blessed are you, God, who redeems Israel. And if you note uh, right away from the beginning. Um, Um, the the theme of redemption comes right there on page 94. Uh, three lines from the bottom, go aleinu, go elabosenu, our redeemer, redeemer of our ancestors, etc. Okay. Uh, a couple of notes on the Baracha, so let's go back to page 84 and 85. Um, a couple of brief notes about the Baracha. So first of all, we can see the reference to the two worlds. Yotzer or Uvorei Choshech. So there we have a reference to the world of Yitzira and the world of Berea. God's... Um, expressions of forming and of creating. This, the origins of this passage, this particular passage is from Yeshayahu, 
Uh, and there, the words are, Yotzer or uvorei choshech ose shalom uvorei ra. Who forms light, creates darkness, makes peace, and creates evil. Which uh, is a profound statement that has far reaching implications. That we would refer to God as not only the source of good, but also. Uh, that even Ra, even that which we experience as evil, has its ultimate source in Hashem, or is potentially in a, uh, a way of connecting to Hashem, which is something that needs a class for itself. Um, so I didn't. I don't. I don't want to uh, dwell on this today. But I wanted to just bring this in because we're going to be passing it by. Um, particularly Yotzer or Uvorei Choshech, who forms light, Yetzira, Uvorei Choshech, and creates darkness. Um, if this, this phrase is important, referring to God as both the source of expressing through Yitzira the creation of light and the, the source expressing through Bria, the source of darkness, peace, and evil is critical as we move towards Shema, which will declare the oneness of God, which means that everything, all of existence has its ultimate source in the oneness, in the one. And so that which we experience as darkness and as evil, as suffering, failure, are all, there can be nothing outside of God. And so this is really important, again, as we approach the cosmic words, Hashem Elokeinu, Hashem Echad, the Lord our God, the Lord is one which is, of course, what this bracha is introducing, the Shema itself. Also, uh, as a, 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 a matter of form, this, these birchos kriya shema are traditionally said sitting down. The Shema is also traditionally said sitting down. We stood for Yishtabach, the expression of praise, and for the Baruch Hu, at the top of page 84 and 85. And then after saying Baruch Hu, we sit down. Why do we sit down as we go into the world of Berea? Correct. Also, nobody was allowed to come into the sanctuary during the Shema, and the doors were closed, and uh, uh, it was uh, just the opposite. It was a conservative center. Mm -hmm. So it's great that you bring up that point, because uh, it's really important that we understand what the difference here is. That, that the doors of the sanctuary are closed during the Shema, is actually a very old German practice that goes back to, right, that goes back to, right, that practice goes back to the Middle Ages, where uh, the, the, the shul was closed from the Shaman through the end of the Amida, so that uh, people didn't disturb the concentration of those who were praying. Um, and I think that there's uh, something very, it's, it, it adds a certain s seriousness and solemnity to this, to this very important prayer. However, along with the seriousness and solemnity, why the difference between 
the traditional Jewish way, which is to sit during this part of the service uh, versus the modern, uh, innov- the modern innov- deviation from the traditional Jewish way in which uh, they stand for the Shema. So it goes back to the idea of the world of Bina, the world of Berea. The world of Berea, as we said, is the world of thought, which is not subjective, it is objective, but requires work. Because I'm not reacting, I have to uh, enter into my mind, I have to meditate, I have to contemplate. And this should be done in a calm and uh, collected uh, procedure, procedural and deliberate manner. Uh, Whereas somebody might think that this is such a holy prayer, therefore I need to stand. The traditional Jewish teaching says, it is a holy prayer, but it's, but it's not a prayer. It's a meditation. It's, it's contemplative work. And for contemplative work, you should be sitting down com- comfortably. Also, the idea is, is that you're trying to, the, the, uh, uh, some features of the world of Berea, the world of thought and Bina also, which is the dominant Sephira in the world of Berea, in the world of Berea, is that it's about order. Order. Emotions are chaotic because they are subjective. They are of the moment. Whereas when we're trying to conceptualize an idea, trying to understand an objective idea, we, uh, we should analyze the framework. And so it's, the, the work is analytical, but that which we are apprehending is a framework. That which we're trying to grasp is an, is an organized, we're trying to understand the theory of the whole thing. This and our work is to bring the abstract into what the Hasidic terminology refers to as isyashvus the abstract into the settled, to to allow the idea to settle within us. And so in, in, uh, in service of that work, we settle ourselves down. The world of Yetzirah is a, a mixture of both. Some of, the, some of it we sit, the first half we sit, some of it we stand, because Yetzirah is about getting excited. And so excitement is, is uh, spontaneous. It has different expressions and, uh, and it can be standing up, it can be, you know, there, there's two components to the world of Yetzirah. There is the getting in touch with myself part of Yetzirah, which is the sitting part. And then there is the experience of what I'm experiencing, which once it fills me, might cause me to stand. Whereas the Berea is never about me. It's always about it. The, the idea, the idea of the creator in our, in our case, right? The, the, these these uh, uh, themes that we're talking about, they can appear in, you know, th- this process, let's call it, right? These, th- this thematic progression that, that shows up in the human process of, diff- of experience, or, or how humans encounter the world uh, can theoretically 
show up in in all kinds of contexts. Here, of course, we're talking about the worlds of kedusha, where we're all where it's all about getting in touch with Hashem, with divine truth. So there, again, to review, there is divine truth in the fact of my existence in my body. There is divine truth in that is decipherable through my emotional experience. And then there is divine truth as, a, as an objective reality. And that's where we are now. The objective reality of divine truth. Does it mean that there's a difference beyond the world of Yes. Shmona Esrei, the Amida, goes into the world of Atsila, Atsilus. But before Atsilus, No. It's Asiya, Yetzira, Berea, Atsila. There are four worlds. Remember, we had the four Baruchs in uh, Baruch Hashem Leolam Amen Amen on page uh, 74. There are four Baruchs there. Blessed, 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 blessed. Uh, And the four and the, the four worlds are are uh, referred to here in the bracha as well. Okay, we, I don't I'm not I don't want to do the bracha now because I want to do a separate class for the bracha. Let's go to the beginning of our meditation, page eighty four. Hameir lo oretz veladorim aleha berachamim. Who illuminates the earth? And so note, Hashem's name is not mentioned here in this meditation. Who illuminates the earth and those who dwell upon it with mercy. Uvetuvo, and with his goodness, mechadesh b'chol yom, he renews each day, tamid, always. Ma'asei the work of creation. I just want to pause for a moment on Bechol Yom and Tamid. Bechol Yom means every day. Every day we experience the renewal of creation. Page 84 at the bottom. Bechol Yom, right? Amchadesh, Bechol Yom Tamid, Maasevereshis, who Mechadesh Chadash renews. The Chol Yom, every day, Tamid, perpetually or continually, always. Maase Vereshi is the work of creation. So, the Chol Yom means every day, that's at intervals. Tamid means constantly. So, what, is the, what are these two terms? The Chol Yom is because we experience the renewal of creation every day. We see the creation, we see a cycle that, uh, of the, of the con continuation of the world, but we perceive it in a cyclical way where each morning there is a sunrise. And so that's the renewal of the day. But in fact, it's tamid. In fact, it's constant. The renewal of creation the creative energy being, or the impulse to, for the world to be brought into existence is happening constantly. There's a constant uh, giving forth from the source of everything that is causing everything to be. Mo rabu ma'asecha, Hashem. How abundant are your works? Eternal and infinite. You, eternal and infinite, how abundant are your works. Kulam b'chokma asisa. You have made them with chokma. 
So this is a, we're now at the top of page 86 and 87. You made them with wisdom. This is a very interesting phrase that you made them with wisdom. And this is a good meditation. You ready for a good meditation? Yeah, Jane. Um, is, there, is there a reason that you would say meditation instead of prayer? Yes. Okay. Uh, a prayer comes from the heart. And this is a reflection on a truth that is beyond my heart. So a prayer is always a, a wish, a, a, a something that you want? Rather than, rather than just the truth about God? You could say that um, um, there is an element of prayer in meditation, but only if you put it there, and that will show up in a few lines, um, where a, the person's intent in meditating is to bring themselves closer to the truth. But in general, the difference between prayer and meditation is that prayer is something that springs forth from where I am right now, right? What's going on with me? And I'm going to bring that to Hashem. So it could be a wish uh, of something that I'm asking for. And it can also be um, a sense of where I am that I want to bring myself. I recognize where I am and I want to bring myself to Hashem. Right? But it stems from a recognition of where I am. And the Hebrew word tefillah? Tefillah means neither prayer nor meditation. It can encompass both. Yeah. Tefillah in the Kabbalistic tradition means to attach. So, as I said, meditation can be a form of a method for attaching myself to Hashem. And prayer can also be a way of attaching myself to Hashem. Um, the, the, another translation of the word tefillah is to judge or to analyze. And that term, right, they would say lehit palel means to analyze yourself, right? Uh, but also, just to general, the notion of analyzing lends itself to uh, both of this, this idea to analyze the self also encompasses these two themes of uh, comprehending it and putting myself in the context of it. Yeah, Robin? Okay, so this meditation, this idea to reflect upon, kulam bechokma asisa, is a fascinating phrase. All of them were made with chokma. So the reason why this is a fascinating phrase is because these are two, these two words, chokma and asisa, are from different worlds. You understand, chokma is um, preconceptual. Chokma is is a uh, the, the the capacity of the human being, or let's say in a human being, chokma is the capacity to think. It is, it's the space in which ideas emerge. It's not the ideas themselves. It's the, it's the uh, capacity, right? It's the source of the ideas. It could be one of the ways that this shows up is in curiosity, which is not an idea, but it's the potential for ideas. But even more, it's the consciousness itself, right? That's maybe, uh, so 
pre, what did I say before? It's pre, to rewind the tape, I forgot what I said. It was a good word. Preconceptual, preconceptual, right? So what is in the mind preconceptual? It's consciousness, right? So there's, there's no, uh, it's awareness itself, not, not the awareness of anything, but the capacity to be aware, which curiosity is pretty close to that, right? Curiosity is already, however, uh, but the capacity to be curious, right? So this is very high. Now we think about it in the uh, in the framework of the the origin of the world. Um, so let's say go back to the human being for a moment, okay? So any idea that you could possibly ever have any thought process that you will ever come up with any and and then following up with any emotion that you'll ever have and any act that you'll ever do has its ultimate source in this one unified space which is precognitive preconceptual consciousness it's the essence of life It's the central truth that, of existence, right? So now we could think of that in terms of the world. And the world, so Chochmah is the first of the 10 Sefirot, first of the 10 divine emanations. And Chochmah is, the, is, that, is the, the, when we think about the sublime source of all existence, the, the essential truth that unifies everything, the, the divine light that started it all, right? And remember, when we use the word light, we're not talking about light, we're using it as a metaphor. This is Chochmah. Now contrast that with the word of Asisa. Asisa, Asiya, action. This is mindless, uh, rote. Doesn't matter what the sublime source of, there is no sublime source in the world of action. In the, word, in the word action, there is no sublime source that's apparent. Right? In someone's curiosity, you can, you can taste the precognitive consciousness there, right? Curiosity or the create, another, another example of that is the creativity from which ideas emerge. So before the idea actually becomes a formed idea, just in that creative impulse, you can touch the sublime source of thought, the precognitive uh, consciousness. But in the act, you don't see any of that. The act is dead. It's, dead is, a, is, is the wrong word, but it's a shell. Right? It's a husk. So we say, you made all of all of this kulam, all of this, the chokhma asisa. You made it with chokhma. That's like chokhma is a tool. You understand? Chokhma is a tool for asiya, for this. Uh, for this um, discon uh, uh, let, uh, let me frame it Asiya here, the word Asiya we're using 
let's let, let, let's let me stay with the thought for a moment. When we talk about the essence of the human being, right? The essence of the human being is perceived in their chachma, not in their asiya. It's perceived in their in their uh, that the essence of the human being emerges is is unified in that precognitive pre-conscious, creative, curious uh, node, which is right, you know, in a plant, you have a node from which the flower and leaf and the stem emerge, right? So it's this kind of node from which everything else emerges, right? So Chochma, but the human being is unified in that. Uh, the, the essence of the human being is encapsulated there. But in Asiya, is disconnected from the self. It's just an act. And the tools are even further disconnected from the self. Right? So here, in the same breath, we refer to Hashem using Chochmah as a tool. Using Chochmah as a tool. And so this brings our mind, so this is the the great meditation here. This brings our mind to reach the limits of our ability to comprehend the divine truth that is at the very source of everything, such that for Hashem, what we're talking about when we're saying, when we're talking about Hashem here, the eternal and infinite, we're referring here to, right, Marabu Masecha Hashem, you, the eternal and infinite one, you are much deeper than anything I could possibly comprehend, such that you, there, there is a you for which even Chachma, the sublime source of everything, is nothing more than a tool. There is a self, so to speak, that is even more sublime than Chachma compared to that central, compared to that essence. Even chachma is just a tool. Chachma and asiya, wisdom or precognitive truth, is on the same level as an act, as an action. Kulam be chachma asisa. It's I love this because it's such a short phrase, and it captures so much. Mora buma secho Hashem kulam de chokma asisa. The everything, and then you go back and you see the rabu, the, which here he translates as great, but the word rabu also means many. How abundant. So the, the infinite uh, diversity that exists in all of creation. are all sourced in you for which even Chochmah is just an action. There is a sublime eternal truth that's so incomprehensible to the human mind. For the human self, the highest, highest, highest source of the human self is Chochmah precognition because really you think about what is a human a human is consciousness right self-consciousness particularly so there is a there's a touch above that which is you can you can become aware not necessarily directly but you can you can you can um, deduce the existence of the source, the, 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 the beginnings, the origins of consciousness. You can, you can sometimes, you can have a sense of wonderment about where my ideas come from, right? We can, we can touch that almost. So that's the highest, that's the highest sense of self, that the, the most transcendent that we can experience within the, the human self. And then, all of this is just an is just a 
a framework. It's just an activity. Uh, the, 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 the sublime nature of the divine truth is uh, sees even the most spiritual imagination of the human being as a, an action, as a, a thing that was made. Jane, you've been asking, you've been wanting to ask a question. Would you say that because we're limited by language, we really can't understand the ultimate truth? Okay. So what you're talking about. So I'm actually saying something even more than that. So yes, it's true that the limitations of language stop us from understanding. Well, I would say that I would I'll turn it around and I'll say language why is it that language is limited up to that point because language is describing that which is describable this is something which is essentially indescribable and therefore it doesn't lend itself to words right but it's so far how far from words is it is that even the indescribable, which as you say, trying to describe Chochmah, words fail when trying to describe what Chochmah is. No, I'm talking about the ultimate. Not I, I understand, I understand. But even in Chochmah, words fail when we try to accurately describe what Chochmah is. That, the most transcendent spiritual uh, depth that exists within human consciousness is nothing more in contrast to this that we're talking about is like, a, is like if you were to compare an idea and a stone. The distance between an idea and a stone, how they are of a completely different nature there it's like apples and oranges we like to say yeah, this it's apples and oranges they're two different things right but apples and oranges are two different things in the same framework of existence an idea to say that an idea and a stone are different is not the right way to say it they are on two different planes of existence a stone exists in the physical and in the in the object oriented, that's another word, good word for asiya, object, right? It's in the object, it's an, it's, it's an, it's an item, whereas an idea is, is a framework that connects all of existence. It's, uh, it's conceptual, it's eternal, it's spiritual, it's, it's, it's a completely different dimension, right? So now go back to that idea and then even above the idea where words can't describe, and that is like a rock compared to the essential truth that we're referring. So it's completely uh, of a different dimension. So I, you, 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 hit, you were correct in what you said, and I just wanted to expand it uh, a little more. And this is what we refer to again when we say Hamelech Hameromam. The king exalted. Levado in solitude, alone. May us from eternity, from then, when, from, from ever. Not forever, but from ever. Right? So we're referring to this, this eternity, this complete otherness, uh, something so far away from, from, uh, from all of existence, from any existing being. And yet, 
on the first line, the world is full of your possessions. Okay. Let's take it to a step further now. It's not that you don't know. It's not that you don't have the language. You can't describe it because you don't know how it was done or what. Okay. Okay. You you completed the thought? Did you get my thought? I think so. I, I think I hear you saying that we we don't know that part of life because we didn't experience it so we don't know it and therefore we can't describe it okay i'm not sure if my example was exactly right so i didn't i left the example out just to make sure that i got the conceptual idea that you're talking about good here this is really important when we talk about something being revealed right so what you're describing is the difference between that which is revealed and that which is concealed and then so that's a binary but there's also degrees of revelation and concealment you could know something better you could know something more you could know something deeper there is also however another plane of existence and this is why i talked about different planes of existence there's another plane of existence in which it's such a fundamental reality that it doesn't, it's not revealable. Meaning not that it's, not that it's too concealed or too high for us to be able to understand. It is that this is not a thing things become revealed ideas become revealed uh, objects become revealed as chachma becomes revealed asisa becomes revealed but there is an essential truth which is so basic to all of reality that it isn't, to say that it's concealed is not the truth. It's simply the word revelation or concealment is not applicable to this dimension. That's what we're saying. So for example, when we, or not for example. So in our case, when we're talking about existence, we're talking about the universe. Existence itself meaning the possibility of existence. Mm. Even the possibility of existence is already a chokhmah type of thing. I could say I know the Kabbalists who are more familiar with this would say that I'm not not correct, but broadly, sort of in the in the most ab, in the most uh, loose association possible it's the origins of existence itself meaning we're not talking about the origins of a particular thing but all of us all the, the whole world exists in a context that context is called existence with a capital e being being itself there's a source to that there is a, a point of emergence at which being becomes beings, which being itself does its thing and 
gives rise to beings. This is all, you could say that this is, there is a spectrum of revelation and concealment where uh, being itself expresses beings. But there is a, an origin to being itself, an origin to existence itself. And this is so, not, it's not incomprehensible because it's too big for our mind to understand. It's, just, it's that it's so fundamental. It's so basic. It's so real. It's so true that it doesn't, It's too fundamental. And therefore, revelation doesn't exist on that plane. Because revelation is all specific. So to break it down a little more, when you, whenever you talk about being able to describe something, having words for something, or in spiritual terms, something being revealed, right? What does revealed mean? It means that I am able to experience it. We're all talking about something specific. Any revelation is going to be specific. There is something before specifics which is the four specifics. It's uh, the point from which pos the point from which possibility itself became possible. Right, so this is, this is not, again, it's, it's not that it's not revealed because we can't comprehend it. It isn't the sort of thing, it isn't a thing. It isn't a thing. And therefore, the term revelation or explanation or description can't apply to it. There isn't, there isn't, there isn't an it. There's no it. And if there's no it, then it can't be a description. Right. And yet, it's the fundamental truth of everything. So it's, we're not saying it's not there. It's everywhere. It's everything. It's, it's at the root and at the source of anything. And it's also at the root and at the source of nothing. Meaning nothing also has to have a source. Nothing is a, is a state of existence. Right? Nothing is concealment. Nothing is... A state of existence. It's a, it's a, it exists in a, it exists in a framework, in which there can be something and there can be nothing. Right? Nothing only exists because there is something. Right. So this too has to have a source. So, this is the this is so you understand how hard it is to describe this. So I don't, I don't want you if you're going to try this meditation, to think about what it is, but rather to allow a sense of wonderment and to allow a sense of the experience of the beyond that's, that's, that our mind is tricked into when we, uh, with, when we hit the paradox of Kulam B'chokma Asisa. And then we can truly say, 
And it's the whole world, everything is connected with you. And then we can truly say, the king that is exalted, alone, and completely other, from ever. Right? We could say that with more feeling and with more reality. What does exalted mean? What does beyond mean? What does what is levado mean? What does completely other mean? That's the source of nothing. That's the, the, the original source of anything that's so true that it's, that even chokhmah is just a thing. Because Chachma, you could already think about it. You could think about how you can't think about it. Right? Because it's precognitive. So you can understand, you could think that my mind has a source. So I, I know the source of my mind. I know my mind. So I know my ideas. I've had a creative experience. So I can touch the moment before I had the creative experience. I can, I can, I can reach to, 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 to have a sense of curiosity about where my ideas come from. But then there's something so much more uh, um, eternal than all of this. May us from 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 from, from ever from the beginning of the beginnings. Now, so the beginning of the beginning is a, is a, is a specific point. May us is even beyond that. Hameshubach praised, Hamefor glorified, Hamisnase. This is the again bringing us to this theme, Hamisnase and exalted, upraised, Mimos Olam from days of old. But the Kabbalistic translation of Mimos Olam is from any of the Sfirot. That is the days of creation, Yemos Olam, the days of creation, right? So we're talking about the, um, the ingredients, the origins of, of the creation of the world. So these are like the fundamental ingredients. Yemos Olam, the Sefirot, are the fundamental ingredients the eternal, uh, the eternal factors that make up all of existence. But here we're trying to apprehend that there is a truth that's beyond the acts of creation. Hamelach hameromam v'hamisnase mimos olam and upraised, lifted up above the days of old, the days of Olam, the days of creation. Um, what's the source of the Yemos Olam, days of creation? Um, Sheshes Yamim Asa. So the, the, the uh, Hasidic interpretation says, it doesn't say bisheshes yamim asa. It doesn't say that in six days God created. Sheshes yamim asa, that there are the six midos, the six sefirot of chesed, gevura, tiferes, netzach, hod, and yesod that serve as the making powers of the world. And so these yamos olam, there is a, tr so, and of course, these are sublime and transcendent and beyond our words. But nonetheless, there's still a source for Olam. And here we're getting to a truth which is higher than Olam. And 
I hate to leave you with a cliffhanger where we go on to from Mimos Olam to Eloke Olam. And there we're going to head back down to our reality. Yeah. Let's just read it through quickly and then we'll wrap up. Hameir, Baruch Ata Hashem, Elokeinu Melech HaOlam. Blessed are you, or we will bring you down to reality, you, the eternal and infinite source of our lives, the one who guides all of the world, who Yotzer, Yetzira, forms light, Uvore, creates Bria, Choshech, darkness, Oseh, Shalom, makes peace, Uvore, Esakol, and creates everything. Page 84 and 85. Who illuminates the earth and those who dwell upon it with mercy. And with his goodness, he renews daily, in the cycle of daily, tamid, always, constantly, impulse the, the uh, uh, coming forth of creation is constant. Ma the act of the work of creation. Mo rabu ma how abundant are your works? Hashem, eternal and infinite one. Kulam, all of them, the chokma asisa are like. All of them, all of it is like chokhmah and asiya, wisdom and acts, behaviors are all the same to your eternal truth. The whole world is filled with your possessions. It's all connected to you. The exalted one, the exalted king who is beyond levado, and the only one, may us from eternity, from beyond forever, Hamashubach Vahamifar, who is praised and exalted, I'm sorry, praised and glorified, Mimos Olam, beyond even the most fundamental eternal ingredients of life. Okay, Olam. Okay, that's where we leave off.